Hey, Josh, how are you doing? I'm good, Landon. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm so glad we were able to catch up. I know you're a busy guy. Nah, man, it's an honor to be here. I appreciate you catching up. Let's go, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what's this uh, Emmy season been like for you? FYC is just around the corner. I mean, have yeah. you one thing after the another, doing one interview after the other? What's it been like? I, I'll be honest with you. It's a trip. You know, it's pretty crazy to know that people are liking liking the things that 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 I'm a part of. I'm a very lucky cat to be in these projects that honestly I have a ball making. I'm working with writers that I am a fan of. I'm working with actors that I'm a fan of. <laughs> so here we are, you know, and then I'm getting to chat with folks that are showing a lot of love. I'm a lucky individual. Yeah, no, and people are really loving the show. I mean, they loved you and the other two, but then now we've got the Big Door Prize on Apple, which is kind of a very introspective show, you know, reveal your true absolutely. potential, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's got people absolutely. thinking. Would now, you sit in that machine? Yeah, I would sit. I think I would sit in that machine. I was just going to ask you that, actually, but I think I would sit in it because I would want to know. Absolutely. You know, I want to I need to make the most informed decision. Right. Yeah, of course. Of course. No, I would sit in it 100 <laughs> percent. No, maybe I would last like a couple weeks, but then the curiosity would 100 percent get the best of me. And then depending on what I'd got, I'd be completely neurotic and paranoid about it for a long <laughs> while after, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I'd be like Dusty. I'd, I'd sleep in there <laughs> secretly and like just get the card and then just kind of not tell anyone and then tell people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same. Now, Josh, what would your card say if it revealed your true potential? What do you think it would say? I mean, it's either professional wrestler, okay, or it would be like sports anchor. Two things that I've okay. always dreamt about doing as well. Like, I love watching sports. I could talk sports all day. Also, I could be a professional wrestler. You know, yeah. there's the um, WWE Performance Center was built 15, 20 minutes away from the house I grew up in. Wow. But it was built after I left for college. I'm telling you right now, if that was there when I was a kid, I think my life would have taken a very different trajectory. Wow. Now, if you could be a professional athlete, which sport would you play? Or would you like to commentate on any particular sport? Hmm. I would love to commentate probably on basketball. basketball. I love watching basketball or football. Those are what we watch the most of in our house. But to play, I'd probably want to play soccer. I, I grew up playing soccer. I love, I'm, I, I love watching it. But I think that's the lifestyle I'd want, you know, uh, maybe a keeper. I grew up playing keeper, so I'd love to be a goalkeeper, uh, you know, and and travel the world. That'd be a fun game to play. Yeah, so FIFA. I, oh, dude, I play a lot of FIFA. Yeah, I play, I'm a master PS5 <laughs> FIFA player. Let's go. Absolutely. You might catch me on the sticks, you know, <laughs> if you're ever out there and you see Billy Cepeda that you're playing against, that's me. OK, Billy Cep OK, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to look for you out there. Billy Cepeda. Absolutely. I'll look for that. The goalkeeper. Do you play the, the goal goalkeeper? No way. I control the whole team. You yes. know? But I put a lot of pressure on my goalkeeper. I yes. got to make sure he's good. You know, I only pick teams. High. Exactly. I only pick teams that have a good goalkeeper, high ranking, you know, yeah. I got you. I got you. Now, you spoke earlier about some of the team members that you've been a part of, the crew members, comedic geniuses, some of the best writers, some of the best performers Absolutely. in the industry that you're working with on the other two, the Big Door Prize, of course, Scream 6. Wow. Can yes. you share with us maybe a funny behind the scenes moment that people may not know about? <laughs> okay. Uh I mean, there's a lot of funny moments, but I'll tell you, it's very surreal going to work on the other two. And the night before, I go see Chris Rock at Radio City, okay? He had his special that he just did. So my wife got me tickets for my birthday, and we went on an awesome mom and dad night out, you know? So we go see Chris Rock. And before the show opens... He was scrolling pictures on the curtain of legends that just legends in the game. So Richard Pryor, Dave Chappelle, Wanda Sykes, Wanda pops up on that curtain. 
the very next morning, I'm getting hair and makeup done in between Wanda Sykes and Molly Shannon. And we're just spending the morning talking about the latest crime documentary that came out on Netflix, you know, discussing the latest crime podcast and just a lot of laughs, you know, a lot of laughs. And uh, what was cool is that I told Wanda, I said, hey, do you know that Chris is scrolling picture of you before he opens? And one of the many reasons why I love Wanda, she, I, a smile went across her face. and She's like, he's doing that? cool real cool you know like just i saw a living legend still have a moment of being humbled by a friend of hers you know and uh it was real cool real cool what about that moment where you're in between these two living legends come you, on chris rocks already told you their legends you already know their legends and here come you on. are getting ready to work with them and just talking so casually about a crime documentary i mean what is that the moment you're like, I've made it? Was there a moment? Oh, dude, I have that moment all the time, Landon. I have it honestly all the time, you know, like just all the time. I can't lie to you. Like I, I never even knew to dream this big as a kid, you know, like I had big dreams, but man, I never really placed them like this. You know, I, 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 I watched Molly on VHS just being being her a superstar yes come on you know like i had i had best of videos that i would watch on repeat you know my favorite actors are chris farley and adam sandler like i was cutting tommy boy monologues to my friends in the middle of class you know and Molly is always so sweet to me. I've always got a million questions for her about the days, you know, and she answers all of them for me. And it's that show in particular, working with Ken Marino, you know, like Ken to me, I think about Ken and a lot of the characters that I play. It's like, what would Ken do here? You know, what choice would Ken make? And just to be able to call Molly and Ken and Wanda, my friends is crazy, you know, and I get to go to work with them and, the thing that makes them so special is that they treat everybody with kindness. They treat everybody with respect. They're always very well prepared. And they're team players. And you realize, you're like, oh, that's that's what this is, man. You keep it simple. It doesn't matter how much you've done. You still just treat it real simple. And uh, And they're just really, really special people in my life. So, yeah, I pinch myself a lot. And I think we kind of saw that the comedy community, how close they were after the Oscars and Chris Rock, you know, we really saw people rally around him, support Chris, especially when his Netflix special came out. So you really do see that companionship within that kind of smaller comedic community, which is really refreshing, isn't it, in this industry? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's funny, you know, like the entire artist community is one where, you know, we're all in this and we all still have that little kid inside that, you know, is just happy to be on stage or happy to be told that they're doing OK. You know, anybody that that it gets a good laugh or a good chuckle out of something that I've made, man, that warms my heart. You know, anybody that comes up and gives me a dab, let's go. You know, like that's that's very special to me. That means they're connecting. And I'm very appreciative of the people that I admire. And I, that give me their craft, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of this business, you know, so uh, it's very cool to be a part of it. Yeah, we love watching it. Now, you've played a lot of roles, you know, Pastor Hathaway and Christmas on the Square with Dolly, <laughs> all the way, you know, to Lance and Giorgio and your current projects. Is there somewhere that you really like uh, in a genre that you particularly like? to perform in is it comedy is it horror is it drama nah i, li I like it all like I, it all. I i i like it all like i i just love it i just love the fact that my job means that for however long i get to live in somebody else's shoes for a little bit and i get to be artistically fulfilled through that process. I get to create, I get to make relationships with 
new friends. I get to get to know new people. You know, when you're making something, you're in the fire with these folks. And you're coming out the other side going, woof, those burns were worth it, you know, and, and it was fun. And, and you create these strong relationships and you get to know a whole new group of artists every time. And so when it comes to it, I just love the idea of of, of making stuff, you know, just want to keep making I just want to keep making good stuff with the people that uh, allow me to be a part of of their team. You know, it's always an honor, you know, it is. And we and we as the audience love to see it. Now, if you could swap lives with a character that you've portrayed in the past, who would it be? Hmm. Good question. Probably Giorgio. Yeah, I love Giorgio, man. Like he owns. Come on. He owns an Italian restaurant slash sports center with an arcade. Yes. Man. Man, I used to work at the Olive Garden, okay? So I used to steal breadsticks daily. Oh, oh, I could give you some OG tips. You can always get a side of Alfredo sauce. You can always order a peach Bellini tea. They give you fresh fresh slices of peach in there. The tour of Italy, you can swap out a fettuccine Alfredo for the spaghetti if you want to. Sometimes I would trade breadsticks with the red lobster next door for some cheddar biscuits. We do a little swapsies. That's you know? brilliant. Brilliant. That's brilliant. No, there's a lot of way, you know, so I would say Giorgio, he got to be a professional hockey player for the Rangers of all teams. I'm a Rangers fan. So I would just really like to be Giorgio, you know, and uh, see, I know where he ends up. So when you meet him, he's looking for love, you know, and sometimes he expresses that a little, um, Aggressive. A little through his insecure side, a little aggressively, let's call it, you know? Oh, he, he speaks at an inappropriate volume at times, you know? Says but appropriate things at times. Says inappropriate <laughs> things at times, you at know? Times. He's just trying to find somebody who's going to tell him he's doing okay, you know? Yeah. So uh, I, I have a hunch that he's going to find that along the way. And then you'll get to see Giorgio really fulfilled. And that's going to be a really fun time. No, Giorgio is a really exciting character because he's always, no matter where Dusty is, he's always kind of hitting on Cass, you know? Just Absolutely. Like, he's like, whatever, I know you're married, but here, come with me, Cass. Like, I'll fill this role for you, whatever you need, a friend. And he's just so unapologetic about it. But, it's, almost, but it's not inappropriate or creepy. It's almost charming right. because we kind of see him for what he is. And even Dusty's not insecure about it. That's exactly it, like. So, okay, so, you know, what's, see, like, he's doing those things. He is hitting on Cass at times. But I read that as, like, okay, why do they keep him around, though? You know, like, he's like that friend that you have where you're like, ah, do we have to invite him to the Christmas party? He's going to tell that inappropriate joke. But you still invite him to the Christmas party because you love him. You have a lot of love for him. So, I see it as Giorgio, yeah, he's hitting on Cass, but he's doing it just because he wants what they have, you know? And he doesn't really know how to vocalize that all that well. He hits on Dusty just the same, you know? He's hitting on both of them just the same. That's how he loves. He loves hard. Yeah, and you can't you can't blame him. And you're going to invite him to dinner because he's going to show up with some Italian food, a funny exactly. story. And he's probably exactly. going to be kind of the star of the dinner because everybody's <laughs> going to see what he says next after two of Chianti. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Now let's shift focus a little bit and talk about She-Hulk because I know that's in contention as well. Now, yeah. what's that ride been on? That's kind of a different space than you've worked in before. Yeah, for sure. You know, another comic book universe, you know, so that was very cool to do. Um, but she Hulk, dude, that was another dream come true, you know. After I had after I'd wrapped up Prometheus, you know, in the arrow in the arrowverse in the DC universe, I I I might have tentatively put my comic book gloves up on the wall and said, like, well, I guess there that goes. And I got that phone call one day just saying, Hey, you want to come play with us and bring Augustus Pugliese to life? First thing I did was make sure to get all the pug comics see who he was read through all of them and you kidding me that's my that's my research that's my job is i got to read comic books and figure out who this guy was and and then knowing that i was going to work with tatiana 
the biggest fan of hers. She's a living legend already. I didn't know Ginger yet, but that's my homie now. You know, I love her to death. And just that was it. And just getting to play in that world and making sure that, uh, you know, I put pressure on myself with every job. I just want to do the best I can. But knowing that I was stepping into the Marvel Universe, I knew quick, especially by the text that I got. As soon as they announced, you know, I had buddies being like, yo, don't mess it up, bro. I was <laughs> like, yeah, I know. I won't mess it up. You know, I'm, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to do what I do. Uh, so it was very cool. It was very cool. Now, if you could play any other superhero in the Marvel Ooh. DC universe, who would it be? Who would you choose? Good question. I'd love to be Gambit. Gambit. That would be fun. I'd love to be Great. Gambit. Yeah. You know, I'd like to try my hand at Gambit for sure. You know. I and also I mean I'd also like to play a villain, you know, like I love what Paul Dano did with the Riddler. So maybe I'd find another villain in there that maybe hasn't been touched, but you know, I I watched on repeat Jim Carrey's Riddler as a kid. I'm a big Jim Carrey fan from back in the day, you know, The Mask and Ace Ventura. Oh yeah. I was raised I was raised on those movies, you know. They call me Cuban Beat. I'm the king of a rumba beat. <laughs> You know, like oh, so, I want to trim. I try to nine horn. Think Let's go! Horn. Come on, man! Come on! <laughs> Roger uh, Predator was dead. Yeah, no. yeah. Double Come pane soundproof glass. Absolutely. There's no way that woman. Absolutely. I I love that you know it like me. Oh, that's, it. that's it's, it's yes. That's what we grew up on, right? Of course, of course. Those are very influential movies to me, man. Always rewinding that VHS, right? It's all Ab absolutely. The Monopoly guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is so epic. Oh, that's <laughs> the Riddler, though, were a bit like a Joker type villain, you know? Go, I even, would love to play the Joker. Story. Remember when Jack yeah. Nicholson played the Joker in the older Come on, Of course. Yeah. Like, I would just love, I would love that. I would love to take something and you know, just really get to sink into it and play. I mean, the Joker would be an incredible character to play. There's just, you know, the problem is I'm thinking of all these iconic performances already, you know, where you're like, how could you ever, you know, how could you ever do it justice? But who knows? Maybe I'll get my hand at that one day and we'll get Evan, to play. You're listening. You're listening. Let's, hey, let's go. Happen. Let's go. You now, know. do you have a dream role, Josh, that you would love to play or someone you'd mm. love to work with? I mean, I've got a bunch of dream roles, but they're all things that have happened before. Like, you know, if if they made like another major league, I would love to be in the remake of Major League. You know, I would love to try my hand, you know, at that Charlie Sheen role, you know, like just playing a nutty, just a nutty pitcher. I would love it, man. You know, uh, I would love to be in a sports movie because I was so influenced by them. You know, I would love I would love to try my hand at a at a remake of honestly, Major League. Now you got me thinking about it. I feel like I'm it has not, to be something like that. Yes. You know, I kind of uh, put it I was, in my head. I think we need that. That's the remake. Hey, I'm with it right there. Yeah, they figure out a way to do. We need. <laughs> Come on, let's that's go. That's like major league. That's perfect. Absolutely, you've got no marbles. You yeah, know? there's a lot of really good stuff in there, man. Yes, bring that to the next generation. Give that to the next generation, right? Let's go. Let's go. And I would just love to play an athlete. You know, with Georgia, I got to play an athlete. Um, uh, you know, who lost his career due to an injury. I love to do that. Yeah, let's go with that. That'd be a lot of fun. What's okay? Final question, just because I have to know. I'm curious. What's your favorite sports film of all time? Ooh, good I question. Know. I know it's tough. Okay, it's either The Sandlot. Yes, because <laughs> it's right. I mean, that's it. I always dreamt about being Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Benny the Jet Rod L Seven Weenie. Come on, come on. <laughs> You know, later became Luis Mendoza from Mighty Ducks too. Exactly, right? exactly. It's either The Sandlot or Remember the Titans. One wow. of those two. You okay. know, yeah, I know you asked for favorite, but I honestly I could give you like top five. Right. Let's yeah. go. Sandlot, Remember the Titans, 
Little Giants. Oh, Little Giants. The Replacements. And I get one more. I'm giving you top five. Let's go Rocky. We got to put Rocky in there. Rocky. You know, let's do it. But I feel like Sandlot, because we mentioned it first, is our all number one, right? That's it. It's Sandlot, you know. I actually just introduced Sandlot to my kids. I've got a six-year-old. I've got a three-year-old. And I've got a five-month-old. Three boys. And I just introduced them to it this past Sunday. No lie. And it was awesome watching my my three-year-old to watch whatever we're watching. He's he's easy. But my six-year-old, if he's not into it, he'll go. He'll draw. He likes drawing comics. He'll go play with his toys. Turned it on. And he was watching. Kind of like looked back at his comic. Watching. The second that our boy walks up to the fence and he hears the beast on the other side my boy was hooked he's like dada what's on the other side of that fence oh i was like i was like you're gonna wait and see close catapult it was over (laughs) that whole sequence where they're trying to the robots and the catapult (laughs) obsessed the whole sequence of benny the jet putting his pf flyers on and running away from him run faster jump higher Oh man, just what an iconic movie, man! Just I got to work with Dennis Leary a couple times. That's my guy, oh. and dude, just be looking at him, I was like, I know that you want me to just like act opposite you, but I can't get out of my head that you were in the Sandlot, bro. <laughs> you do you know how cool that is? I felt like the Chris Farley character. Remember when you did the thing? That was awesome, you know. <laughs> it's the guy, it's the guy from Sandlot. It's the guy, yo, it was my guy, you know. That's- Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. And you, sir, are a legend. And I can't wait to see what's next for you. Thanks a lot, Lennon. It's very cool, man. Appreciate it, bro. Sure. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for everything. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Let's go. We'll talk soon. Take it easy. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. You too. Thanks a lot.